Because a geographic information system is essentially a large database, that means that we can use it to search for and find records that are based on particular attributes. So in this example here, I've got a map of Australia and it's been broken up into different classes based on the pre-European vegetation. Now, if I open the attribute table for that particular layer, you'll see obviously that I have a number of fields, the ID field, the shape being polygon, area perimeter and description, which is just the class name for each of the different polygons that you'll see in the map. Now, a common query that I might want to create would be to find, say, areas of, of eucalyptus that are larger than a particular size or perhaps smaller than a particular size. So to do that, I need to first of all be able to find areas that have been classed as eucalyptus and then I need to find out something about their area. Now we have the ability to find out information about the area of different polygons because we're in the geographic information system rather than just a database that's non-spatial. One of the key things here is that we need to make sure that our area and perimeter fields are actually containing data that are correct. So to do this, it means that we actually need to ensure that those, these fields have been calculated while we've been in a projection that makes sense for measuring area and perimeter. So if we go up, we can actually have a look at the properties of the layers or the data frame essentially, and make sure that it's in a projection that's appropriate. So you can see here that I've got it in a world projection and I've used a cylindrical equal area projection. So that's okay for measuring area. So that means that if I was to calculate the area of that of each of the polygons in this data set, I can be assured that the area that's been calculated is correct. So to do that, all you need to do is to right click on that area field and go to calculate geometry. Now once I've done that, it's going to give me a warning just to say that I'm not in an edit session, that's fine. And I want to make sure that I calculate the area for polygons within this particular field here. So I have other options there as well. But I'm going to calculate my area. I want to make sure that I'm in units that, that I'm happy with. So that, that might be in hectares or square K, whatever you like. Um, and then you click OK to run ahead with that. So once you've made sure that your area field is showing the particular, the, the correct values for each of your polygons, we can now go about making a selection based on area. So you want to make sure that you've done that correctly first. So to make selections within the attribute table, all we need to, 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 to do is again to open that attribute table and just up the top left here, we can go select by attributes. Now this is going to find us different records within the data set based on particular information that's that's within it. So for example, if I want to find polygons that have an area greater than say 50,000 and if I hit apply on that, you'll see down the bottom here it tells me that I have 28 out of 1480 records selected. Now I can also switch to just look at the, uh, at the selected records, you'll see, see I've just got those, those ones, or I can toggle between having all the records available there. So any records that meet that criteria are now coloured in cyan in my attribute table, but then if I also go across and have a look at my display map, you'll see that they've been selected as polygons there as well. So then I can go ahead and clear that if I like. And I've cleared both the selection from the attribute table and from the map itself. Now if I go back into select by attributes and say I want to bring up that once more. Now, now, now I want to find say only the, the areas that are eucalyptus that also meet that criteria. So at the top here of select by attributes, you have a look where it says method. I can go create new selection, which will cancel out what I already have there. Or I can select from the current selection. So if I click on that one, and this time I'm going to 
remove this here, but it's going to retain that information that I've got areas greater than 50,000. But I want description equals, and if I click on get unique values, that will give me a list of all the possibilities. And I'm going to scroll, scroll down and find eucalyptus. So because it's saying select from current selection, this is only going to find me areas of eucalyptus that already met the criteria of having an area greater than 50,000. So I hit apply on that, and you'll see that both in the attribute table, I now have 12 records selected, and they're also appearing in my display over here. So you can use a number of different ways to build your queries. So another way in which that I could create that exact same query as if I said create new selection description equals eucalyptus and area greater than 50,000. So that would give me the exact same result as what we just came up with by doing it in a two-step process. The reason sometimes we go with two steps is that it can be a little bit easier when you're when you're just starting out to build these queries and often your syntax is difficult and you can get errors based on not having written the, the formula out correctly. So if you do it in two steps, it's often easier to get it right there. Now another thing that you, you need to work with and, and have practice with is just get, making sure that you get the order of that equation right. So say if we want to, we might clear that selection here. And in general, we use the top box, we use some sort of operator in the middle, and then something over here on the right. But that doesn't work always. So for example, if I want to find everything that's not eucalyptus, I would actually say not description. So I'm double clicking on, on, on description in there not description equals get unique values and eucalyptus and if I hit apply on that you'll see that all the records in my table are selected if they don't have eucalyptus in them and there we go in the in the map view as well so just making sure that you get the order correct there otherwise you get either an error or an error message that is or the answer won't be right so it's a good idea to have it to have a clear picture in your mind about what the correct answer is so that when it returns it to you you know that you've got the right the right um, syntax in your in your selection there to demonstrate a slightly different type of, of attribute query I've opened up a different data layer here so this is, this is the Nature Conservancy Terrestrial Ecosystem Systems Database. And on the left hand side, you can see the attribute table there. There's only eight records in it, so quite small, and I wouldn't actually need to create a query to find certain things. Usually I might just be able to select um, some certain records. But for the purposes of demonstrating this, we'll go through it anyway. So if I, if I go straight ahead into select by, by attributes and the reason I've picked this data set is because I can see grasslands in record number 5, also in 4 and in 2. So if I wanted to find, uh, find all of the records that have some form of grasslands in it, I'm going to need to create my query a little bit differently. As I go to create this query, I'm going to select my field here, which I know has got, which contains the information based on the names of each of the classes. And instead of using equals here, I want to find any of the names that contain the word grass in them. So they're not exactly grass, but they contain that within its name. So for this reason, I use the like operator. Now I'm going to put a space in and just a single inverted comma. Now I'm going to use a, the wildcard here. So this is the percent sign. So this means that it will find anything that has characters before the word grass. So tropical and subtropical occurred before grasslands, for example. So I put that in 
and then I'll, I'll type in the word grass give myself another wild card so that that means that there might be characters after the word grass and then close off that inverted comma and then once I hit apply it should find me all the records that have grass within them at some place so you'll see there it's found me three different records and once again you can see them in that display map as well so this is really important if you've got large numbers of records obviously not when you just have eight that's okay and that's pretty easy but if you've got large numbers and you do need to find records with with something within their name it's a it's good practice to use these wildcards to do that